Good evening. I would like to turn your attention to a topic that is a very sensitive issue that has plagued our nation for over a period of four decades. It is abortion. This issue of abortion that has claimed millions of innocent unborn children that live among our nation and worldwide today. Sadly, our nation has agreed to legalize this in the name of choice and convenience. Through research and moral conviction, I would like to attempt to present the case for those who are unable to speak for themselves. Initially, I will be giving some of the excuse of the worthless excuses abortion advocates use and my response to show how ridiculous their arguments do not make any sense. Abortion should not be legal in the United States or anywhere else, period. So I beg you to choose life and take a stand with me to help protect the life and liberty of the unborn. <laughs> Just a few seconds of your time, I would like to discuss the following issues. Women who feel there is no other need or option to but to end with abortion. Excuses used by abortion advocates the fact that abortion is murder, and what we can do as Christians. Sometimes pro-life advocates are so wrapped up on the life of the unborn, but seek to failure and forget about the one's life who this tragedy has affected. I believe that most women are misinformed about the procedure and are aware of the moral complications that are attached. We need to show these women that these that there are other options of help they include the following, which is adoption, Christian counseling, money from Christian organizations. We should also be showing them love and compassion and share that God is a God of forgiveness. And most of all, lastly, we should pray for them. These simple options mentioned above do not change the fact that abortion is indeed murder. A statement from the National Right to Live Org says, abortion ends the pregnancy by destroying and removing the development of the child. Yes, this formation of the unborn child, the child that has a heartbeat, the child that beats blood and life. During the crucial time, especially when a mother is in her seventh to the 10th week, the baby has already developed facial features, arms, legs, and brain waves. The horrible procedures of abortions can be violent and humane. According to the Centers of Disease and Control, CDC, from the period of 1973 to 2004, a sum of 40 million abortion procedures have occurred. That is an average of 1.2 million a year and between 3,000 to 4,000 a day. Abortion advocates usually use mild watered down statements to justify their thoughts of proceedings with abortion. One example would be the statement of saying that a fetus is just an unborn child. Second, the decision you make is just an anti-life decision. The last misconception would be that life doesn't begin until birth. I beg to differ. Maybe these pro-choice advocates should hear the cries and torment of the innocent babies that have not been born. They should also consider about thinking about the baby's right to life instead of the mother's choice. The Bible clearly has a view that abortion is considered murder. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I had set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. Let us consider how many prophets that have been killed. God has a definite plan and purpose for each of us. In Psalms 139 verses 13 through 14, David discloses, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. God creates each individual to be unique. <laughs> Abortion is taking the life that could have made a choice to learn, grow, and be successful to make choices. I have great trouble in understanding how medical doctors who have, are required to save lives, but then inhumanly kill innocent babies. 
I have a problem with the political areas making decisions who say we have rights for all people, but in turn do not think about the rights of the ones being aborted. What can we do as Christians? The steps that we can take. Oppose bills that want expansions of abortion laws and do not elect the leaders who stand on pro-choice views. Secondly, we should pray with our season on the matters of abortion. Prayer can really change things. Number three, please vote for pro-life. In conclusion, if you are a Christian, make it a priority to take a stand with me against this evil and unto fair opposition against the unborn. Also keep in mind to show love and compassion to the women considering an abortion and let her know that there are other options.